Let's bring in Brad Tucker, the astrophysicist and cosmopologist at the Australian National University. Brad, I've been desperate to talk to you about this story since <laughs> I first read about it. What is the expectation about the likely success or otherwise of this mission? Do you think it is actually likely this is possible that we can change the direction of an asteroid? Yeah, look, I think it actually is really possible. I think that's the amazing thing, that giving it a big nudge, uh, even though it actually won't result in a big nudge, because we're talking about something that's still 160 meters wide, weighing a couple of trillion kilograms. We only need a small nudge, though, and I think that's the thing. If you're just able to prove that we can alter the asteroid just a little bit, if you get an asteroid early enough and nudge it, well, that's the difference between it coming near the Earth and sailing thousands, if not hundreds of thousands to a million kilometers away. And that's the whole goal here. Can we just show we can do it? Then we kind of know, well, how much, uh, how early and how big of an asteroid we can do it on. I, I guess it leads to the broader question of what is the likelihood that Earth will ever need this sort of defense system to protect us from an asteroid? Have the space buffs figured that out? So look, it, it's guaranteed we'll be hit by one. But when I say that, it's, you know, it doesn't <laughs> mean tomorrow or the next decade. It may even be the next hundred years. So to put this in a scale, uh, in 2013, uh, a meter or an, or an asteroid about 8 to 15 kilometer, uh, meters, not kilometers, sorry, meters wide, exploded over Chebolinsk in Russia and did lots of damage. There's about 1,000 injuries, no fatalities. In early 1900s over uh, Siberia, Tunguska, we think one about 50 meters wide, leveled part of a forest. So these things that are 50, 100, a couple of hundred meters in diameter hit the Earth every, you know, maybe every century, every two centuries. Now, that's the issue we worry about. We're not actually worried about the ones that are tens of kilometers wide, like the dinosaurs. You know, we can find those things. Find something, finding something 20 kilometers wide is easier, we'll say. I won't say easy, but easier. It's these smaller ones that slip by, hit the Earth more, and we know will hit at some point. We just don't know when, so you kind of want to have your backup plan ready, like a fire drill. And so with those larger ones that you were talking about there, the control freak in me really wants to know, how much warning would we get if one of those larger ones was hitting there? I mean, is that something we'd know about years or months or days in advance? In some cases, we can know 100 years in advance with some of these larger ones. So that's the good thing, is the larger ones we know are pretty complete. We know most of them, where they are. You know, the, the only one that may come close, close being within 20 million kilometers, uh, wouldn't it be till the end, uh, uh, I think about 2090, maybe 2100. That's the only one we'd ever look at. Um, but again, we still think it will sail not even close to the Earth. But those smaller to medium ones, those 50 to 100 meter ones, we, we know only a few of. Uh, we know we're incomplete. In fact, this whole DART mission is part of a suite of projects to better prepare for this threat. So not just can we defend against it, but can we find them? Can we catalog them? Can we track them so we know where they are? Because these medium-sized ones do in this specific what we call Earth-crossing orbit. So they quite literally cross the path of Earth regularly. Now, we're very unlikely to always be at the same point, but at one point we may be at the same point intersecting, and that's what we worry about here. And that's exactly the asteroid that's being tested from this category of asteroids that regularly cross the path of Earth. So, Brad, with this current mission, I mean, is there any chance here that we could actually be playing with fire by trying to intentionally crash a spacecraft into <laughs> an asteroid? I mean, we are changing the natural progression of things. So, so this, is a good, this is a good point. And actually, this is one of the reasons why this asteroid was chosen. So there's two asteroids, actually. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. The smaller one almost acts like a moon. Well, we will crash into the smaller one, and the bigger one, through its gravity, will keep the smaller one in check. So we can actually measure how much of a shift we do to the bigger one, but also the bigger one won't let the smaller one escape. There's no, there's nowhere near enough force to be able to kick it out of its system, which means we're not going to accidentally fling it to the Earth. And that's actually why this system was chosen in particular, because there's that bigger one uh, to help aid us in the measurements and keeping the system stable. OK, well, that's good to hear. This mission is being run by NASA. Are the Chinese and Russian space agencies, are they doing similar programs? I mean, we all have a pretty common goal on this front. This is actually something quite unique where Australia is, or sorry, the US rather, is only really the ones looking at planetary defense. They have a whole planetary defense office 
that coordinates these things and the searching. Um, a lot of the other countries don't do a lot of this, and this includes Australia. It's kind of just viewed as this other thing, and it's always been reliant on NASA to do, but there's been a lot of work. And in fact, this whole project comes back from uh, the Obama White House that commissioned a report that says, what do we need to do to better prepare for asteroids? Searching, finding, cataloging, preparing for a defense like with DART. And a lot of other countries haven't caught up. They haven't actually even participated. In Australia, this is kind of a problem. We do a lot of the searching in the Northern Hemisphere. We don't search as much in the Southern Hemisphere, which means there is a bit of a blind spot in the Southern Hemisphere for finding these things. Now, eventually we would see it, but that's the issue is we want to find it early enough so we can prepare defenses like this. And this is something NASA has been really trying to get other governments involved with to say, look, this isn't just a U.S. thing. This isn't just a NASA thing. This does need to be treated as something that you have to think about prepare. I think as COVID showed, these events that are every one or 100 or 200 years happen every 100 or 200 years, and you do want to be prepared for them. Brad Tucker, the space nerd in me loves talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate your insights and, and taking us through all of that. Take care.